Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Real quick, guys, how is everybody doing? And ladies, uh, I know some ladies watch also. So, how is everybody doing? Let me put it like that. Okay, guys, y'all remember the Chrysler 300 with the 2.7 liter engine in that I brought in. Uh, I don't know. I say it was two, three months ago. Put a. We ended up putting the engine in it. Oh man, that car made the most, the loudest noise I ever heard. Y'all remember the video I did? I barely made it in the shop. In fact, I didn't make it all the way into my stall. I made it into the shop, but not my stall. It died, quit on me right then. And uh, I did three videos on that. So, matter of fact, I'm gonna click the start video right here. So after you done watching this, after you done watching this video, y'all wanna hear a loud 2.7, how they sound when you don't change the oil and you cause bottom end failure, check that video out, all right, after you watch this. And by the way, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I found out I should have been asking people to thumbs up the video in the beginning from day one. So I guess I'll start doing that. Give the video a nice big thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Let's, we gonna talk, we just gonna talk. Uh, this car is back. I gotta say, I guess three months ago, four months ago, I put a complete engine in it, long block. At this place, uh, we're not big fans of short blocks and reusing the heads, okay? So, uh, I'm not even sure you can get them that way anymore. Most of uh, our management wants us to do complete engine, trying to take away as much risk as possible. And on this particular engine, I actually had no choice uh, but to do a long block because it was slushed up all, y'all know the three, the history on the 2.7. Uh, it can accumulate major sludge. If the PCB valve is shut down, if you don't change your oil <laughs> on time, that is the most contributing cause of sludge, but uh, at least on this engine, but that was the case. So uh, we had no choice but to put an engine in and this wasn't warranty or anything. He actually bought the engine and we installed it. Well, he says he's been having some, uh, he's been burning oil, wow. Okay, and as you can see, he got a little, I guess the oil thing that he made a funnel out of to keep an eye on his oil. Because, let me tell y'all something, I ended up drilling him. Now, not drilling him, but explaining to him the importance of changing his oil. Okay, this is an older guy. He uh, obviously lacked changing his oil and ruined his, his engine he had in here. I mean, it was sludge everywhere. Matter of fact, I'm going to put that video right here. Y'all going to see a heavily sludged up 2.7 and what would cause this lack of maintenance so click this video right here after you're done watching this video you watch it now so i got on his case about that so i guess he's doing better at it i mean who wants to spend five six seven grand <laughs> on an engine especially a car like this at this 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 day and age so uh yes he says he's burning oil now we got a new oh we got a, it's not a new but we got a way we do uh we're doing oil consumption tests now uh chrysler I'm going to talk about that some more in a separate video. In fact, I want to get with my buddy Caper. We're going to talk some more on uh, burning oil, oil consumption. Because I want to go over with you guys uh, to proceed the procedure that we have to do uh, in order to start the oil consumption test. All right. And uh, some of it I agree with it. Some of it I don't because it can easily be manipulated. I mean, anybody can unscrew their drain plug and let some oil out and it appear that they are burning oil based on the oil level. That can easily be manipulated. We're gonna talk about that some more in a separate video. Like I say, give me a little time to gather my thoughts and my information and get with my buddy, uh, this guy's garage, 4IM Caper. In fact, here's the link to his channel. He got a whole series on that F-150 uh, truck that's been burning oil. Uh, he got some tips for you guys. Anybody on the F-150, go check out his channel. And watch those oil consumption videos. Um, Ford might be trying to pull some trickery on you guys. But uh, go watch the series. Now, back to this 2.7. Uh, Zen for check in the light. Misfire. In fact, y'all know me. We like to verify. Uh, we like to verify complaints around here. Check in the light on. Misfire. Cylinder 2, I think it is. Okay, we all know. Well, by now, we should all know, but I talk about it every single video. How to distinguish bank one and bank two. The cylinder quick 
crash course. The cylinder closest to the front on a modern engine, not all of them, I had to refrain from saying that. It's usually cylinder one, which make that bank one. So uh, bank two is normally cylinder two. In this case, it looks like this one, uh, ooh, it's pretty close. Now you can also go by injectors. So because this injector is closer to the front, I would assume this is cylinder one over here, which make this bank one. So this is bank two. Ah, easy enough. So I got a misfire P0302. So what I'm going to do is pull the plug and the core, visually inspect them, and uh, base my diagnosis off there. Because I do not want to assume, guys, I do not want to assume the problem is internal. Look at this. This is a brand new engine. The tags are still on it. I put this in a good three, four months ago. Okay? Now you know if you don't find anything wrong with your secondary ignition, meaning coil or spark plug, it's time for a compression test. But again, I do not want to believe or know that anything's going on internal with this engine. So what I'm going to do, like I say, I'm going to yank this plug out and take a look at it and uh, uh, see what's going on, guys. Let me go to an ad break right quick, man. I will be right back. We got to get this plug out. We got to find out why this car missed fire. Stay tuned. Be patient with the ad. Don't. Oh, I got I to gotta stop saying it. I will be right back, y'all. Stay tuned. All right, guys. I'm back. Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for staying with me. Let's get this uh, air cleaner and stuff off. Y'all know how I do with... Uh, potential tune-ups man you also know what a tune-up is designed to do uh pretty much help restore peak performance okay so anything that will affect performance you should uh, especially uh maintenance wise you should be checking um the air filter dirty air filter can uh affect performance okay but we have a misfire cylinder too so what i'm gonna do is uh take a look at this spark plug now i know some people gonna ask me when you replace the engine that you put in new spark plugs absolutely okay but you know you just you just never know man you can uh you can buy a spark plug that's supposed to give you a hundred thousand mile life but it do it won't it doesn't okay and i also catch a lot of flack by removing spark plugs with a electric drill uh guys it's really not a problem removing it what you don't want to do is i see i still see this look let me show y'all something i still see guys do this put their spark plug in there to, with the electric drill put it down in there and go Brrr. guys who that is some risky stuff what if you cross thread that i mean sure you can go in and chase thread it and get it back but that's just that's headache you don't need to bring on yourself that's a self-inflicting wound so to me, there's nothing wrong with removing, only removing spark plugs with an air drill. But install it, use a hand ratchet, man. Do not install it with a hand ratchet. Okay. Man, this do not look like a plug that I just replaced three months ago, four months ago. I I don't remember, guys. Let's, I got to look at the date on when I did the video, because I did the video around the same time I did the job. That doesn't look good, but at any rate, I will recommend uh, spark plugs. Now, because the misfire was singled out to cylinder two, I could very well have a coil issue. It is extremely hard <laughs> to test a coil because they give out in the craziest ways. They stop sparking in weird ways. They arc. I mean, age could cause them. Some, in some cases, you should probably just replace the coil at a certain miles that's not on the maintenance schedule but i think you should go ahead and do it at a certain mile anyway so what i'm gonna do is recommend on just cylinder two uh spark plug and uh and a coil and cylinder two and spark plugs all the way around a six cylinder tuna basically okay and the air filter look pretty good and i'm also gonna recommend we clean this out i'm gonna check the pcv it's tucked under here okay if you don't know how to get this out there's a video right here i'm gonna put right here real easy to replace the pcb is bolted to the uh valve cover bank one valve cover all right i'm gonna check uh i've already checked the oil i'm gonna go, I recommend an oil change uh coolant flush well no need to flush it i put in fresh coolant four months ago when i installed the engine Okay, but uh, it's going to be pretty simple, guys. I don't want to uh, 
tie y'all up all day on this. Uh, just a typical six cylinder tune up. And last but not least, I will check the controller. Make sure it is up to date. To me, that is at least 40% of performance. <laughs> if there's some updates that car manufacturers have on your controller that will improve drivability, you should do those during your tune up or you should get it done. I mean, because you will feel more effect from a drivability shift improvement change from a controller than you probably would spark plugs that wasn't that but that that was worn but not affecting drivability okay it just it just you want to cover all bases doing uh tune-ups especially when you're trying to restore peak performance all right so uh one more ad break actually i'm about to wrap this up no need to do uh, i'll give y'all a break this time but thanks for being patient with those other ads so i'm gonna wrap this up man uh yeah typical 2.7 if you own a 2.7 please stay on top of your maintenance service schedule maintenance please stay on top of that because this engine is prone to sludging all right guys uh something is really up with this engine i'm gonna tell you, show y'all look at these uh spark plugs y'all see that this come out of this bank right here wow these spark plugs do not look good at all okay here's my new spark plugs i'm going back in with uh, also look at the oil that came out of the intake let me see if i can get this back here i see that i got the intake tilted because I, I didn't want to fight to take it all the way off just to do spark plugs but you can do it that way but uh yeah so <laughs> oil came out of the intake y'all so why is oil in the intake i don't know but i do have one of these in fact, I replaced the PCV valve last time I was in. When I installed a new engine, it's got a new PCV valve. So, something ain't right. Uh, it's a brand new, you see this? Mopar sticker still on it. All right, maybe, uh, I don't know. So, I'm going to complete the tune-up and we're going to go from there. So, we will see. I got new spark plugs. Uh, I got a crank and a cam sensor here also. They wanted me to, uh, this is a cam sensor. This is a crank sensor, okay? All right, so the crank sensor is down here on top of the transmission. You got to understand what a crank sensor do in order to find its location. Uh, so same thing with a cam. The cam sensor is right here. Okay, this is how I check for sludge in a 2.7. Because sometimes it has a baffle over here that you can't see inside the valve cover. So simply pull the cam sensor out. All right, guys, let me finish this uh, tune up and go drive this thing and see how it... Uh, how it uh, how it performs okay so that's all i have thanks for watching comment subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next video